I'm here looking for treasure, and you turn up with this. How do you make money for nothing? This is a lovely table. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. That is brilliant. Are you sure? Yeah, I am. That's why creative carpenter JJ Chalmers wants to get his hands on things before they hit the skip. I would love to try and come up with some use for it. That'd be brilliant. I've been a school teacher and a Royal Marine before getting a second chance as a medal winning cyclist. I'm passionate about making and mending to transform old stuff into profit making pieces. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers. This has seen better days. <laughs> I just think they need some colour, they need brought to life. He can transform his finds into desirable. What an amazing transformation. Cheers, JJ. Valuable. Look at that. That is fun. Well done. And hopefully saleable items. I don't think I'm going to have any problems selling this. If JJ is successful, then he can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. £128. Unbelievable. Thank you. At the Wallyford Recycling Centre, the locals have their hands full, heaving their heavy carfuls of cast-offs to the side of the skips. But here, hoping to lighten people's loads, is JJ Chalmers. Look how busy it is. This place is teeming with people's unwanted whatnots, but I want to be wowed. Only the very best cast-offs are going to cut it. The rest can go to the crusher. JJ has special permission to save three things from the crusher. What was inside that? Which have the potential to be revitalised or reimagined and sold on, hopefully, for a profit. What you got in there? For you today, old Nothing. pillows. Old pillows. And glass. Old pillows and glass. You don't want to mix them up in a pillow fight. David's arrived, but will JJ have a fighting chance of salvaging what he's brought along? Did you used to have a bird? No, no, I found it in my attic, but I'm just trying to get rid of it today, I think. Sorry, I'm JJ, by the way. Oh, hi, I'm, I'm David. Nice to meet you. Hi. So this this wasn't yours, it, it just happened to be in the house when you moved in? Yeah, yeah, we are renovating our house and uh, it was at the back of the attic amongst the dust and everything, so it's too small for the kids, so I need to get rid of it. <laughs> Brilliant. And no plans to get a bird anytime soon? No. Any idea how, how old it might be? I'm not sure. I think the people that were in the house before were there for maybe 40 years, so it's probably at least as old as that. Well, if you've got no use for it, I think I might be able to find some use for it, if, you, if you'd let me take it away. Yeah. That'd be all right. Yep. If I can do something with it, could I come back and show you what it's become? Yeah, definitely. All right. right. Well, I'll just grab it, if that's yep. all right. Thanks a lot. Ooh, got it. Cheers. Okay. Thanks. JJ soaring off with a battered bird cage. David, any thoughts on what JJ might do with it? A light, maybe, or some sort of feature? Yeah, I'm not really sure. Of course I took this. When I'm looking for things, I'm looking for items that are sturdy, they're old, and they're interesting. And this has got all of that in spades. But which maker will take this project under their wing? Kev Paxton. Kev is a traditional blacksmith with an artistic spirit. Give Kev any old iron and he can hopefully shape it into a scrap metal sculptural showstopper. I wouldn't describe what I do as a job. OK, it pays my bills, but I do it for the love. Um, and I just, I just feel very privileged that I can, you know, hit a piece of hot metal and turn it into something that people want to smile about. The fact that I can take old pieces of scrap metal and then turn it into something with a, a cool new life is, is really good. Well, Kev, let's hope your cage isn't rattled when you see what JJ's sending your way. With one item saved and spoken for... Oh, bathroom suite. JJ's back on the lookout for another two things to save. Cardboard and chipboard. Anything with board doesn't really work. Except for maybe sideboard and surfboard. I reckon I'd do something with those. Yeah, go surfing on it. The surfboard, that is, don't take your sideboard to the beach. Margaret's arrived. 
but will JJ be on board with what she's chucking out? This is a lovely table. Was, was it yours? No, it was my uncle's. Your uncle's? Sorry, I'm JJ, by the way. My name's Margaret. Nice to meet you. Sorry to disturb you. This belonged to your uncle, did it? Yes, my uncle's actually downsizing, so just getting rid of some of his stuff just now. So you've been... What else have you got in there? That was a wardrobe that was smashed up. Right, well, I'm very glad you've not smashed this, because it's, it's lovely. Was this sat in his, his living room, coffee yep. table? Yeah, he read his paper on it and he also put his... He had a pillow on it, so he used to put his feet up when his feet were sore. So it's been used as a footstool yeah. as well. I mean, it's been well used. Any idea how long he might have had it for? I uh, really haven't got a clue. About yeah. 30 years, maybe more. I think this is ripe for a transformation. Could I take this away, please? You can, yeah. Really? Thank yeah. you very much. And can I come back and show you the result once it's, once it's transformed? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Oh, that would be lovely. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. JJ's bagged a classic mid-century modern footstool stroke coffee table. Are you glad it's not at the bottom of a skip, Margaret? I am. I'm glad that it's going to use and it's... I'd like to see what it looks like when it's finished. Yeah. This mid-century style has really come back and it is so in fashion right now. However, it's looking tired. And I think I just need to find the right person to wake you up. So which maker can give this table a bit of get up and go? It's Zoe Murphy. An expert furniture and textile designer, Zoe can brighten up old and forgotten furniture with printed patterns so colourful, they would make a rainbow blush. So I'm a printed textile designer. That means I love printing onto things. And if anything sits still for long enough in my studio, it's probably going to have a print on it. I really love colour. <laughs> I use a lot of colour. Honestly, I think it's my favourite thing. People are always really shocked, but in quite a kind of happy and nicely surprised way. It always makes me feel really good about doing my job. Well, Zoe, you'll have to really bring out the brightness in order to energise this tired table. That's two items ready for a revamp. It's intriguing, but I don't think it's for me. But with one item still to find, JJ's angling for something special. You hear that old classic, two fish in a tank, one turns to the other and says, how do you drive this thing? Classic. JJ, you just tanked. Stuart's got stuff to chuck, but will what he's got be JJ's catch of the day? That's a really charming suitcase. Thank you. Very Thank nice. You Sorry, very I'm JJ. Hi, JJ. Lovely Hi. to meet you. I'm Stuart. Stuart. W was that yours? Or? It wasn't. It was my auntie's and uncle's. Oh, uh, right. The unfortunate thing is my auntie just died a couple of weeks ago. And we've clear, we're clearing out the, the house. I'm really sorry to hear about your loss. Can I ask what, what, what was in it when you came to clear it? Mainly photographs from my uncle. Oh, really? He was, uh, he was in the, the Second World War and he did all the Arctic convoys and stuff like that. Unbelievable. So, so they were keeping was. all their sort of memories and whatnot yes. in it. I, I presume you cleared it out. It, it, yes. Can I see inside? Yeah, of course. 1945, I think, is the year it was made. Yeah. That has lasted well. It's just in a wee bit of a uh, run-down state at the moment. Yeah. But yeah. Do you know what? The latches are there. Yep. The, the handle looks like it's in working order. I would love to take this away, if that's all right. Of course you can. Brilliant. Yes, all right, well, thank you very okay, much. OK, thank you. JJ's sauntering off with the old suitcase. What do you think he's got planned for it, Stuart? I have absolutely no idea what he's going to do with it, but I'm sure he'll be able to come up with something. So I see so many suitcases come into the recycling centre every single day, but this one's particularly nice, I think, so I couldn't resist it. Something can definitely be done with it. That's three things saved and ready for a revamp. Kev's challenge is to make the birdcage sing. Zoe will have her work cut out trying to brighten up the tired table. And JJ will attempt to spruce up the suitcase and hopefully send it off on a new journey. Well, that's it. The gates are closing, but I've got three items tucked away that are in desperate need of some TLC. So this is where the hard work starts.
Leaving the recycling centre behind, JJ's in Ratho, west of Edinburgh. Because a little birdie told him there's a certain someone there who might be able to work wonders with his birdcage. And metal maestro Kev is standing by. So I'm looking forward to JJ coming today. It's always exciting to see what goodies he's found in the recycling centre. So um, fingers crossed it's something nice to work with. Right, I'm a bit nervous about this one. Yes, it's a quirky item, but there's not a lot of material in it. And what do you do with it? I've got a few thoughts of my own. We'll see what Kev makes of it. All right, Kev, how you doing? This is a bit different. You're looking a bit cagey there, JJ. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, I do feel a bit cagey because this is not something you see every day coming into the recycling centre. Yeah, it's definitely different. It's um, it's quite light, but I mean, I can be a wee bit more delicate than normal. I can use a smaller hammer. Um, what are you thinking? Maybe kind of open it up on one side. Maybe it could be like shelves or a letter rack or kind of hold ornaments or something. You said about ornaments, that's, that's quite cool. I mean, what's quite in just now, you know, plants inside, you know, bring in the garden in the house. So we could almost like rip it apart so it looks like a stage and then put a plant in there, a nice plant that could be like centre stage. I think so maybe keeping it that look, could maybe even put a bird on the outside. I like the idea of a plant stand, flower stand, but how, how would it sit? Is this for something that's sat on a table, on a shelf? You know that old fashioned thing, you know, where a bird cage was on a stand that comes up and almost hangs down like an old fashioned street light. So we could do something like that with it. So it sounds like this, this is kind of growing in your head as it goes. How much is it going to cost to transform it, though? 450 Brilliant. I like the idea of the flower stand. This is an exciting one. Pretty nervous one from my point of view. Are you? Because <laughs> it's really delicate and I'm a bit heavy handed. All right, well, don't lose too much sleep over it, but I expect an amazing transformation, all right? Cheers. Cheers, JJ. He seems to like my ideas, but maybe a wee bit wary because I'm a bit wacky. Um, he mentioned sleepless nights, so I'm maybe going to have one or two. I knew this was going to be a tricky one. Not only do I want to transform it, I also want to keep some of the shape. And considering the fact that it's quite a delicate material, it's going to need a soft touch. No wonder he's a bit nervous. Kev has a budget of £450 to try and transform the birdcage into a plant stand. But will he have a hard time giving this project the soft touch it requires? Margate on the southeast coast is home to beautiful beaches, people eating ice creams, and seagulls patiently waiting to pinch your chips. It's also home to designer Zoe, who's taken delivery of the careworn coffee table. So, happy Zoe? I like the look of this. This is, this is a bit me. Nice atomic tapered legs. I love it. Hi, JJ, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. I've got your delivery here, a really nice table. Well, I'm glad you like it. I thought the shape was absolutely beautiful, but it, it does look a bit tired. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'm with you on this. I don't think anything about the shape needs to change. It's kind of fantastic. It's the veneer on the top and really the paintwork all over that needs a, a bit of a redo and then some print. Well, I was hoping you were going to add some print. Do you have anything in mind? I'm in the mood for a bit of a play, so I might come up with some motifs that I'd like to see on this and then organically see how it grows. OK, I'm happy for you to have a play. I do like the teak top and would like to keep a lot of it on show if that's possible. One thing I'm spotting is that the veneer on the top isn't in really great condition. So I think the challenge for me is going to be printing over those areas of damage. Right, right. Well, hopefully there won't be too much to cover up once you've stripped the varnish off. Uh, what kind of budget were you thinking of for this one? It's going to be about 400, 400 quid. How's that sounding for a completely restored and decorated table? I'm fine with 400. Look, I'll let you crack on and I'll come and see you once you're done. Great, fantastic. Well, looking forward to seeing you. I'll catch up with you soon. Great. Thanks, Zoe. OK, see you later. Bye. I think the biggest challenge for me on this is going to be the fact that I'm going to have to print over the areas of damage quite carefully, making sure to cover up anything that looks like it's been too well worn. So first thing to do is to unscrew everything find out what I've got and have a look at the condition of this wood. 
It'll be £400 for Zoe to liven up the table with her printed patterns. JJ wants a lot of the original wood to be left on show, so Zoe will need to be careful to not get carried away with colour. From Margate to the town that's just bananas about bunting, Dunfermline. JJ's at his workshop, suitcase in hand, but he won't be unpacking. Instead, he has to work out how to pack it with potential. Right, so I have saved this suitcase because this is the best example of an old vintage suitcase that I've ever seen come into the recycling center. And also it's in good condition. So I don't want to mess with the outside of it. It's inside that I want to do something with. I want to give it a new purpose so it can go on new adventures. And I'm thinking, picnic set. So JJ's going to kit out the case with all the things you'd need for a great British picnic. So waterproofs and a pork pie. Uh, it's a wee bit fusty, uh, but that's easily fixed. I've got vinegar, water, and then I'm just going to give it a good spray throughout. To de old furniture, white vinegar is an easy and inexpensive way to eliminate odours. Your house will smell like a chip shop for a few hours, but who wouldn't like that? All right, get this outside. <laughs> get some sunlight on it. JJ is leaving the case to air out. I guess he's not a fan of the chip shop smell. Next, JJ is cutting out a piece of MDF he's going to use to reinforce the lid of the suitcase. But before he puts it in place, he has to make it look pretty. Right, this is the fabric that I'm going to upholster this with. But this is not the place where I should be upholstering it. I put it on this desk, it's going to get ruined in seconds. So I'm going to do this in the comfort of my own home. Oh, I've always wanted to see JJ's house. Nice chair. The plan is to cover this in fabric, uh, but I also want to put a layer of foam in. So what I've got is leftover underlay. JJ's hoping the underlay will act as a protective barrier between the wooden backboard and his new fabric. Right, upholstery time. So, foam first, then my wooden backing. JJ has cut out a piece of his fabric, larger than the wooden underlay, and is squirting on some hot glue to stick it in place. I believe the upholstery term for what I'm doing is wrong, as in, I'm doing this wrong. But I like to call it the JJ method. For anyone thinking about adopting the JJ method, the quick glue and staple technique really only works on simple recover jobs. For more complex upholstery, it's best to leave it to the experts. Hey! Listen, that's what I was hoping it would look like. Pretty pleased with that. The next part of JJ's picnic plan is to attach plates and cutlery to the upholstered board. Right, so I'm going to try and attach this with leather strapping, uh, and the idea will be just to create little loops that will fasten down. First, JJ is punching holes in the leather before screwing it in place, being careful to create a snug loop for the cutlery to fit into. Pretty excellent, if I don't say so myself. But listen, I've only done one. I need to do that on all these pieces of cutlery and I need to do them twice, I reckon. JJ could have his work cut out. He has to make every single loop the same snug size or the cutlery will clatter about all over the case. So the JJ method had better be up to the task. So far, JJ spent £25 on the project. But with a lot of fiddly work ahead, Converting the case will be no picnic. Outside Edinburgh, Kev is about to start work on the fairly flimsy and brittle bird cage. In order to turn it into a new hanging plant stand, Kev will need a very light touch. So, how are you going to tenderly tackle this one, Kev? I'm going to start doing a wee bit of swing. Demolition work on, on this. Um, hopefully it doesn't fall to bits too much. 
I'm sure he means gentle demolition work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along here. Can you like this top bit? I'm hoping it doesn't fall to bits when I cut it. So I'm going to take this section here out. And all these wee bits here, I'm going to turn them into a wee bird. So I'm going to do something nice, like a wee sort of songbird. And I do that, just pull them back, just like that. And that looks like a set of cutters, doesn't it? If Kev manages to remove the sides of the birdcage successfully, his plan is to then bend the bars back so they resemble theatre curtains opening up to reveal whichever plant is taking centre stage. So I had a worry that when I did this, this was all just going to go ding and fall to bits, but it seems to not have fallen to bits too much, which is kind of good. Relieved that the birdcage is holding its shape for now, Kev is cutting out the individual bars he wants to turn into a decorative songbird. So I've got probably enough of them cut now, and I'll shape up the bird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say shape a silhouette of the nightingale. Kev's drawn a picture of a nightingale and is using it as a template to create his wire-framed bird. So as long as you're going to make it look like a duck, it'll be OK. So what I'll do is I'm going to try I'll put some of the scrolls in there now and see how it's going to look. To bulk it out into a plump 3D shape, Kev is curling some of the bars into scrolls that will become the nightingale's plumage. Does a nightingale sing at night? Is that why it's called a nightingale? Yes. That's the first part that came out of the head there. So a nightingale does sing, doesn't it? The males sing at night to attract females flying overhead. Has that taught you something about birds? I actually do know lots about birds. Do you know why owls never go on dates with each other when it's raining? Why? Because it's too wet to woo. Ah, bird jokes, is it? Think you're some kind of comedy hen? What's this? Oh, here we go. A seagull flying into the sun. What's this? We could be here all day. Seagull come home from the chip shop. I'll stop now. You've missed your calling in life, Kev. I think it's looking OK. Happy that his nightingale is on the right course, Kev can now concentrate on creating the theatre curtain effect. And he's starting by separating the bars with an angle grinder. So if I sort of pull that back like so, it's giving that sort of drape effect. Kev is now tack welding the bars to hold them tightly in place, but his initial fears about the flimsy metal are coming back to haunt him. So this is, um, it's all gone a bit wrong. Every time I try to pull it, put any pressure on it and I weld it, the metal's so light, it's just popping. So every time I put a weld somewhere, something else just pops. It's just not really working. I really want to try and keep this intact, but I don't think it's going to be possible. Kev is in trouble. If the bars keep falling apart, he'll have nothing to work with, which is nothing to joke about. In Margate, Zoe is taking the careworn coffee table apart to assess the extent of damage on the teak top. So, Zoe, how's it looking? All right, let's have a look. Mmm, that doesn't sound good. So, now to strip it, what varnish is left on it, to get a look at what condition the wood is really in. <laughs> Zoe is hoping that some of the scratches, dents, water marks and stains will come off with the varnish. I'm really noticing some burn marks here. So, she's using a chemical stripper rather than sanding it. With really old wood veneers, there's a chance I could sand right through them. <laughs> so if they've been worn down a lot already, I might lose the last couple of millimetres of wood and end up hitting plywood, which wouldn't be ideal. Zoe is gently rubbing off the varnish with wire wool to reveal the condition of the veneer, 
So Zoe, does that help take off some of the damage? I'm spotting that there's nearly no difference <laughs> to the condition of the wood. Ah, that doesn't sound good. So, it's always worth getting the varnish or whatever's on there off, regardless. But stripping it's not really doing much to the condition. It'll be interesting to see how I'm going to cover up some of this damage with print. If there's a lot of damage, Zoe will need a lot of print to hide it. But JJ wanted to keep the original teak on show. So, what's plan B, Zoe? What did you just say about sanding? I'm using the sandpaper just to see if I can lift some of the stains and the dirt out. I just have to be careful not to sand all the way through. Zoe's playing with fire. If the veneer wears through, the whole tabletop could be ruined. So, Zoe, has it made any difference? I think the sandpaper... I think it's lifting it a little bit. Great. Now we're getting somewhere. OK, it's actually done a really great job. I've managed to lift that semicircle burnout, feeling quite proud of myself, and now I'm going to put a bit of uh, wood stain on it. Happy that the sanding has made a significant improvement to the top, Zoe is applying a stain to give the wood an even colour before varnishing the top to make it durable and shiny. A lot of woodworking is a bit like doing beauty processes. I've scrubbed it, I've, I've fake tanned the wood. This is like putting the moisturiser on with a bit of uh, body shimmer. Then you should consider giving it a deep exfoliating scrub. It's taken years off me. Next up on the table spa day, it's getting its legs done. Zoe has stripped the old paint and is giving them a new cheery pink makeover. Pretty excited now because I'm about to do my screen printing. I think I'm going to do this grid design in white off the end of the table. Here we go. Having removed most of the wear marks on the teak tabletop, Zoe is now being selective about which areas she'll add print to. Oh, nice. OK, super strong pink. Can do a second layer now. That is, if she doesn't get carried away with colour. I can tell already I'm going to have a really playful time just building up the layers of motifs on top of this table. So, yeah, two down, probably a million more to go. Yeah, she's getting carried away. In Dunfermline, JJ's putting the last fiddly finishing touches to the old suitcase. But is it ready for a posh picnic? And it's so satisfying when everything has its own little place. When JJ found it, the old case had been gathering dust for years. But now... It's suited and booted and ready for an al fresco eating experience. So, pack up the pork pies and stuff in some scotch eggs, because this spacious suitcase is going places. JJ's added vintage cutlery that slots snugly into the new leather loops along with lightweight metal serving dishes. He's added new upholstered inserts which help support the structure of the case and will ensure your sandwiches won't get squashed. JJ opted for a crisp green and gold colour scheme in the hopes of livening up the inside but has left the exterior age and wear on show. So, will someone want a vintage picnic in the park? As you could tell, that it had been on loads of adventures, from the scuffs and the wear and tear. And what I'm delighted about now is that, well, it can go on more adventures. That's a really charming suitcase. At the recycling centre, JJ loved Stuart's suitcase. It was my aunties and uncles who were clearing out the, the house. The case had been used for storage. Mainly photographed from my uncle. He was in the, the Second World War. And JJ wanted to try and send it on a new journey. I'm sure he'll be able to come up with something. He certainly did, Stuart. And after the picnic set was advertised, it was soon sold to an antique centre in Devon. 
and owner Clive loves it. It's a wonderful colour, really kind of summery, and it just sets it off perfectly. Unfortunately, I've not been able to catch up with Stuart, but his lovely suitcase produced a profit of £100, which I'm sending his way. JJ spent £25 creating the picnic set. It was sold for £125, leaving a profit of £100 that he'll be sending Stuart's way. With his suitcase off to a new home, JJ's in Edinburgh to find out how Kev has got on with the plant stand. Kev was getting by on a wing and a prayer when the birdcage started falling to bits. So, has he managed to make anything? This was a bit of a nightmare. I've got a few more grey hairs on my beard because of it. Um, but I persevered, you know, stuck to it. It's not how I told JJ it was going to be, but I'm hoping he'll be happy. A bird cage into a plant stand. Now, I reckon this is going to be a first, and it's definitely quirky, but if I want to sell it, it's going to have to be beautiful too. The old bird cage had been nesting in the attic, gathering dust for decades. But now... It's spread its wings and has taken flight as an elegant hanging plant stand. In the end, Kev had to replace the flimsy cage bars with structurally sound ones, doing away with his theatre curtain idea and instead creating graceful sweeping curves entangled with creeping vines that continue the botanical theme. Kev has salvaged every usable piece of the cage from the bird feeder dishes, now tea light holders, to the nightingale perched proudly on top. Kev has tried to create a dramatic swooping stand that suspends the cage come plant stand. But will it be what JJ's expecting? Oh, Kev, what a transformation. It is amazing. But like. I say that, I, I love it. You can still see what it was once upon a time, but I love this stand as well. Good job. Well, I'm happy that you're happy because I'm not going to lie, I had a few moments with this. So has it not gone to plan? When I pulled the wires together, it worked OK. It started to pull, but as soon as heat went here, it was just like, just exploding all over me, so... Right enough. You'd said you would make these curves, this sort of curtain, yeah. out of the original struts, but... You can still see so much of the original shape in it. It is absolutely beautiful, and I love this bird as well. The nightingale. That's 100% made out of the cage. Kev, you're an artist, mate. You're Thank an absolute you. artist. Um, what about the budget? We'd said 450. I'm happy. Just that's fine with me. Brilliant. I guess I'm going to come and pick this up. But honestly, mate, it's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Sure, JJ. JJ absolutely loved that, so any worries that I did have have been sort of brushed away now. So, uh, yeah, on the next project. I shouldn't have been worried, and Kev definitely didn't need to worry because it is spectacular. I have no problem selling it. Did you used to have a bird? When JJ saw David's boot, he couldn't help sticking his beak in. We were renovating our house and uh, it was at the back of the attic. It had some age to it. The people that were in the house before were there for maybe 40 years, so probably at least as old as that. JJ was happy to take it away. No idea really what you might do with it. A light, maybe? Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's not a light, David, but Kev did have a bright idea for it. And after the plant stand was advertised, it was soon winging its way to a private buyer. JJ's in Cockenzie to show David the transformation and hand over some cash. Hi, David. Hi, JJ. How are you keeping? Good, good, thanks, yeah. I can see the renovation. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> so that's why you were up in the loft and found this birdcage? Yeah, the birdcage, it was right up in the, the top in the attic, so... Well, it's, it's not a birdcage anymore. Right. I actually sent them to Kev. He works in Edinburgh, actually. Uh, it's still got a use within nature. Instead of a bird cage, it's a plant stand. Oh, wow. So obviously, the cage itself has been drastically sort of yeah. reshaped and reformed. And then 
inspired by the old kind of budgie cage stands you used to see in your granny's house or whatever. Um, he created this amazing stand to go with it. But actually, it's the little attention to the detail that, that Kev puts in. It's things like, well, does still have a bird? <laughs> and all of that has been made out of parts of the bird cage. What do you reckon to that? I really didn't know what it was going to be. Um, I was thinking maybe a light or something, but that, that looks great. Well, it's sold already. It's uh, gone to a private buyer. I'm delighted to say I've got a bit of profit for you. There is 550 quid. No way. <laughs> That's great. Worth a, worth a trip to the recycling centre. Oh, definitely worth a trip to the tip. I'm going to see if I can find any more. <laughs> <laughs> Go root around in yeah. the loft again. That's magic. That's really good. <laughs> I didn't expect to make as much. Any idea what you're going to do with that? Um, I'm not sure. I was, I was asking the kids what they fancied, but uh, we'll put some of it towards the, the renovations and uh, treat the, the kids. We'll go out for a day or two. And... Brilliant. Right. It's okay. Pleasure to meet you. Great. Look after yourself. Thanks. Thanks, Judy. Bye. Kev came in on budget at £450. The plant stand was sold for £1,000, giving David a profit of £550 that he's going to put towards house renovations and a treat for the kids. Lovely. After another successful sale, JJ's in Margate to find out if Zoe has managed to save some of the wood on the old coffee table or if it's now covered in colour. It did have a lot of kind of stains and scratches, and I've managed to cover all of those with the print, so I'm really happy with how it turned out. The coffee table that I gave to Zoe was stylish, but it was tired, it was past its best. I'm hoping that she has used her unique talent to make it look better. Old tables are bound to pick up some wear and tear over the years. But instead of sending them to the skip, some careful covering could be all that's needed. Zoe has tried to produce an eye-popping, dazzling tabletop design that makes it look as good as new. Covering only what was necessary, Zoe set out to create an 80s-inspired bubbly burst of pattern and colour while still allowing the teak wood to shine through. She wanted the newly painted pink legs to pop and perfectly complement the peachy pastel prints on the magazine shelf. Zoe hopes her colourful designs would enhance the table's mid-century style. But will the bold, bright look be too much for JJ? Hey, Zoe. Hi! Oh, this is so cool! <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. Like, I, I liked the bit of furniture before, in fairness. I thought it was quite stylish. But that is just another level. It's very you, isn't it? It is. I'm really pleased you like it, and I'm very happy with this piece. There is a lot of variety in that. Like, what have you done? Well, there's been a lot of print going on it, and actually there was a bit more damage than I initially thought when I started stripping it back. But I've managed to cover all of it with some patterns, some design, and so now it gives a kind of, like, 80s Miami or Memphis look about it. So nice and retro, but also quite modern with the severe shapes. Budget-wise, are we still all right on that? 400? Yeah, 400's good. I'm happy with that. Honestly, it just looks like all your skills and talents and things on show. It's an awesome job. You've nailed it. Thank you. All right. Take care. Cheers. See you later. Bye. I'm really pleased that JJ likes it. I'm proud of how it's turned out, and I think someone else is going to love it too. Zoe has done such a good job on that. That isn't just a piece of furniture. That's a piece of art. This is a lovely table. When JJ met Margaret, he loved the look of her table. It was my uncle's. My uncle's actually downsized. The table doubled as a footstool. He had a pillow on it, so he used to put his feet up when his feet were sore. So JJ took it to try and give it a leg up. I'm glad that it's going to use, and I'd like to see what it looks like when it's finished. Well, Margaret, you won't be able to see the real thing as the new-look coffee table was sold to a vintage and retro shop in Norfolk. An operations manager, Hannah, loves its style. This coffee table is fantastic. It's really retro, looks like a cartoon, reminds me of the 80s. I love it. 
JJ's in Preston Pans to show Margaret how the coffee table turned out and pass on the profit. Hello, Margaret. Hello. How are you doing? All right, yeah. Lovely to see you. Uh, I got a lovely coffee table off you up at the, at the recycling centre recently. Um, it hadn't been yours, though. Who did it belong to again? Uh, my uncle, yeah. It was your uncle's yeah. house, so he was getting rid of bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. It was quite old. Can you remember how long he'd had it for? Oh, about 30 odd years. Yeah. Yeah. But tell you what, he'd taken very good care of it, I think, yeah. because uh, you were kind enough to let me take it away. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't work on this one personally. I sent it to Zoe, uh, so she's had some fun with it. It's still as it was, it's still a coffee table, but it's been given a bit of a facelift. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> it doesn't look like the, the original table. Well, that's the thing. Actually, the table was fantastic. So really, she's just used it as her canvas to have yeah. some fun with. Um, she's changed the color of the legs, but actually she's tried to retain as much of the coffee table as it was. So a couple of wee fixes here and there, or if there was any parts of damage, she made sure that she put like a bold color over it. Um, but yeah, she's had some fun with it. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Is that what you expected? No, no, totally different. I was actually, I didn't know, had a clue what to expect. Right, well, it's, it's already been sold, actually. Uh, so it went to a sort of vintage and antique shop in Norfolk. So happy to say I've got some profit for you. I've got 150 pounds. Oh, lovely, yeah. First, I'm going to put it in the skip to just get, demolish it to get 150. I'm sure he'll be proud of that. What do you reckon you're going to do with that, then? I'll give it to my uncle and see what he wants to do. He'll probably give him it back, but oh. I'll give him the option. Right, I suppose it is his profit. It is his profit. At the very least, you should probably take a little cut of it. Oh, well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. you look after yourself. Right, thank you. Well, Zoe has done another fantastic job on that lovely wheat coffee table. And 150 quid's profit means that Margaret's uncle has got a great little surprise coming his way. Zoe's costs to refresh the table came to £400. It was sold for £550, giving Margaret a profit of £150 that she's going to pass on to her uncle. And she may even get some back for herself. JJ saved three things from hitting the skips. The suitcase is now ready to travel for a vintage picnic in the park. The birdcage has been transformed as a botanical beauty. And the coffee table has been revitalised into printed perfection. Well, I knew my finds had potential, but I'm still amazed with the transformations that Kev and Zoe have pulled off. Now, rather than being lost forever, they're all off to a new home.